Yeah, so, so the question is, is it possible to use this sort of logic to generate not one, but many potentially different instances of geometry? And the answer is, is yes, by and large. Uh, it gets tricky sometimes, and sometimes disconcertingly quickly. But it's certainly possible to generate more than one object using a single set like this. Uh, it may be a bit complicated to start doing it now, here now. Uh, well, we're already generating a bunch of, of arcs, right? That's already happening here. So we have, we're using one logic to generate all these different arcs. Uh, what I can try is draw not just two curves, but a number of different curves in Rhino and see if we can actually have them all work at the same time. So we'll create three of these, these systems. And if it doesn't work, then there are probably ways to fix it, even though that goes beyond today's focus. So now I have this curve, not just once, but four times. And also this curve, four times. We are dividing them. Uh, I'll also remove, uh, leave the loft there and hide the by arcs. If I select not one curve in this input here, but four curves, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Oh, enter. And do the same here. I select my secondary curves here, 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 and here. Yes, it actually works. So now I can use the same logic that operates not on one, but on four different curves and I generate four different outputs that all still uh, adhere to our constraints. The thing you'll have noticed here is that this is no longer a double line. This is now a double dashed line, indicating that what's flowing from left to right is not just a list of values, but is multiple lists of values. So in fact, in a tooltip, I can even see that there's, that there's four lists here of 29 items each. And this is what's known as a data tree, and this is where it gets quite complicated quite fast, and it's tomorrow's subject. 